Well, hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something. And today on the workbench, we're going to be taking a look at another PS5 power supply. Now, this will be the first repair in my new home. Um, I have not quite got everything out of boxes. There's still plenty of stuff in boxes, I'm sure you can see, but I think I've got enough out of the boxes that we can fix a PS5 power supply. Now, this particular supply comes from us all the way from the UK and was sent to me by uh, uh, Joey of Joey Does Tech. And this supply came out of a PS5 that he was trying to repair in a live stream and um, it was uh, seemed to be failing. He did fix the PS5 by replacing the supply. So we're pretty sure this one is failing under load as he just put a, a note on it, faulty under load. And I would like to include a link to that stream, but it seems to be private. Joey sent me a link to that stream, but it seems to be a private video at the moment. So if we can get that sorted out, I will try to put that in the description. But uh, this is from like um, uh, early May 2024, somewhere in the late April, early May 2024 is when he was doing this particular live stream. But uh, anyway, he was uh, kind enough to send me this power supply, see if I could take a look at it for a uh, for a video and just see if we can figure out why it is failing so let's get right into it if we could go ahead and get my uh, load fired up before i take it apart we're going to check this thing under a load and just see what it does now i'm trying to remember which one's positive which one's negative i can't remember this is a 400 uh, ER. So let's just see. We'll just check with a meter. Because I really don't want to hook my uh, DC load backwards. I'm not sure what would happen. Probably nothing good though. So I'm going to plug this up. This supply it does run, so it's not totally dead. But it doesn't seem to be able to um, fully power a PS5 under, under working conditions. So let's just see. I'll make sure I get this polarity right. Okay, there we go, 12.098. So positive is the top lead right there. Okay, and I will unplug this. Let's get our load connected. All right, see it bleeding off the charge on the capacitors. There's no load on right now. Three amps, well, that sounds fine. Turn it on. Should discharge that pretty quick, and it did. All right, let's hook our power supply. I mean, our uh, AC input back up, and see what happens. Hard to do with one hand. There we go. There you go. 12 volts at three amps. Looks perfectly healthy and normal. But is it? Now these things are rated for up to like 31 amps at 12 volts. So. A significant amount of power. Let's see what happens if we start increasing this load. Four amps. Five amps. We're starting to drop off some. Six. Seven. Eight. Hmm. Nine. Ten. Yeah, that should probably still work at that point. Um, let's keep going. 11, 12, 13. Well, we're getting into some questionable areas here. 14 amps, 11.8. So how much voltage do we have if we get, if we take our little, you know, my leads, these leads out of the, uh, out of the equation. Can I check it? Let's see. I can do it without shorting everything out here. Probably wouldn't be good. I'm having a hard time making contact. All right, we're still 12.036 when checking right there at the leads. That looks fine. Okay, let's keep going. 15. 
I wish I can get my leads to make contact down in there. 16, 17, 18. Oh, and we shut down. 18 amps and we shut down. Bring it back down to 10. Of course, at this point, she has gone into shutdown. So we're going to have to unplug it and plug it back in to ever get it to do anything. Let's see if we can do that. I wonder if it will start up under a 10 amp load. We'll plug it back in. Yep, she did start. She did start. Let's see if we can sneak up on this again. Remember, this thing's rated at 31 amps. And they will do it. I've tested them. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Well, the load's off, I just realized. Turn the load on. See, even at 12, she's getting erratic, getting unstable. And she shut down. Hmm. So she's getting more and more unstable the longer we've got it on here. All right, we're back up. Of course, the load is not on. Yeah, shut down at 12 amps. So we have a problem where it cannot supply you know the full load to a ps5 it's enough for it to turn on and get started but as soon as there's any real demand any real work being done it's going to shut down so that's where we are let's get the covers off and see if we can figure this out well i have saved you the uh, trouble of watching me remove the covers of this ps5 uh, power supply and i should mention that i do not recommend people do this you know i don't recommend people open up their power supplies at all because there are dangerous voltages inside so, let's see, what do we want to do first, I think, or I know the very first thing we need to do is discharge this power supply. Uh, let me see if I can, yeah. Let's see now. Uh, I think I do have my, yeah, here is my discharge capacitor discharge tool. We're going to discharge these large capacitors. Right about here, because we just had it plugged in, and I would imagine there is still a charge on them. Yep. A substantial charge. So our capacitors are discharged. So let me do it one more time, just to make sure. Sometimes they build up a little charge. All right. I think we're safe now. I would like to give this a quick check under the microscope. Just see if there's anything obvious. This particular one, I don't think we're going to be that lucky. I wish we were. But I have a feeling this is going to be one of those odd ones. Really, really odd ones. All right, well, our visual inspection didn't seem to really, um, you know, come up with much. I didn't see anything obvious. A little bit of dirt here and there, that's about it. So I decided to check, check something else here. What I want to check, I want to plug this supply in. I want to watch the voltage across these capacitors. That's the uh, power factor correction boost voltage, which should be about uh, 395, something like that, somewhere in that ballpark, 390 to 400. But 395 is what it seems to run at. And I've got a meter watching it. 
Um, I've got the load set back here on 6 amps. Okay. Let me plug this in. Let's just see what we get. Um, all right. There we go. Okay. We're putting out 12 volts at 6 amps. Our boost voltage is only 300 volts. That's not normal. What happens if I turn the load off back here? No load whatsoever. We're still only 314, 310 volts and dropping actually. Very odd. Never seen that one. So it's continuing to drop down below 300. If I turn the load back on, it does go back up a little. So, hmm, a PS, PFC voltage is low, bad low actually. So we could have a bad DAP53 since it does control the PFC MOSFET, controls that switching. We could have a bad capacitor. I don't see any bulging in them. You can look at the sides of them, the, the heads of them, the top. I don't see any bulging in them. They could still be an open one there. So, but that's going to be our problem. She's struggling to uh, boost the voltage like it should. And i got to figure out why. So, what's our next step? Um, I think I'm going to go with replacing the DEP. 053. I have discharged this by the way, so it's safe. This chip here, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's you know, these capacitors, one of these capacitors could be bad, I suppose. However, I am of the opinion if one of those was completely bad or totally not in the circuit, there's still 180 microfarad capacitance there. I think with no load, that this thing should be able to regulate that 395 volts. If there, if there was no load, Shouldn't have any problem. Now, if you had a heavy load on it, I could see it struggling if it had only half its capacitance. But it can't seem to maintain it with absolutely no load. So I'm, I don't think it's the capacitors. So DAP053 it is. Our DAP53 has been exchanged or replaced. Uh, it's time to see if we've done any good here. I've, I do have my meter reconnected uh, across the uh, boost capacitors there, so we'll be able to see that voltage. And I do have a load connected, uh, set on three amps, I believe, so not, not much of a load. So let's see if I can give this some power and see what happens. What could go wrong? Well, Uh, all right, 12 volts. Look at there, 399. All right, that's looking much better. Let's increase this load. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 amps. No problems. Let's crank it on up. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 19, 20. She's running. Going up. 25 amps. Yeah. 30 amps. 
31 amps. 31 amps. Full load. Let me back it back down. I don't have any cooling on this thing. 15 amps or so. But that looks uh, good. I think she'll work. I think she'll work. All right, let me see if I can get this back together and we'll put it in actual... Uh, if I can find a uh, PS5 right here somewhere, we'll we give it a test in a uh, actual chassis. Well, I have installed this repaired PS5 supply into a uh, 1015 chassis I had laying around, and I've got it running a PS5 game, Resident Evil 4, and it seems to be doing just fine. Has not missed a beat. She's able to uh, provide the current demand of this uh, game, which PS5 games do tend to push the system harder than PS4 games. But I think our supply is repaired and good to go. Well, I hope you liked that one. That was somewhat interesting, educational, entertaining, any of the above. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in that very next repair. So long for now.